to IELTS Arabia. So today we will take a look at the, um, we will continue actually the global multiple choice questions from yesterday's um, lesson. And then we will start the new uh, lesson. We will talk about located information and multiple choice questions in the IELTS reading. Let's get started. So what is a glo global multiple choice question? It just looked like a regular and a typical multiple choice question. Talking about the format first. This time, we're talking about the title of the passage. So we're talking about the general title of this whole passage. Usually, it comes at the end of the passage. So the good thing is that you have already skimmed and scanned the information in the passage. You already have an idea about your passage. So the global multiple choice question has your STEM question, which is all, almost always the same. If it's not the most suitable title, you, they can tell you the most suitable heading or like something quite similar to this one. So, which of the following is the most suitable title for the pad, for the reading passage? So you have to select one answer on your answer sheet. And you've got each option selected by an, uh, a letter, okay? So you have to go through all of your options as a strategy wise and take a look at all of them because sometimes they are quite um they're related to the passage but what you need to do in the ielts reading global multiple choice is to basically find the the most suitable title that involves the general idea of the passage okay so as I said, there's a lot of sub-hitting points in your options, but we need the option that has your full passage um, ideas, okay? So it's something general for the passage. Now, we said first thing, we have to um, basically select our keywords from each option so effects physical injury brain development child development worldwide and it's important because it's, they, when they say worldwide it should be worldwide okay? the importance of socialization okay infant survival in the wild Now, after we selected every single option, we already have an idea of our passage. If you need a, like a minute to skim through the passage, just to make sure that you have the right um, selection of option, you have selected the right one, you can do that. If you're really sure about the passage and you remember everything and you're sure about the title, you go ahead with the one that is most suitable. You have to select the one that has all, not, not all the main ideas, but the, it covers the main ideas in the passage. Okay, if you think that there is too close to each other, again, you can do the process of elimination of the others. And for example, you think that it's C or A, you can go through the text um, very quickly just to, just to give a general um, idea of if you don't, if you're hesitating about two options. But usually the right answer would be very clear for you because it comes after you analyze and scan and skim the text previously. So we will go to the classroom. Right. Let's go to the question. The 
the writer's main idea is to we've got four options let's take a look at them so the first one says let's go with Cami and we will highlight So the first one we have is to advise farmers to grow different varieties of canola. Second one, give a detailed explanation of the canola plant. C. Talk about the effects or the effects of the recent drought in Australia. So talk about the effects of the recent drought in Australia. The last one is describe research on new varieties of canola. Describe research. Okay. Let's take a look at A. Advise farmers to grow different varieties of canola. Is it correct or incorrect? It's incorrect because there's no advice given in the text. So this one is an X. The second one, B. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Because there is no detailed explanation provided in the text. C. Is it correct or incorrect? Again, C is incorrect because the drought is mentioned correctly, but it's not the main idea of the text. So the main idea of the text is not to talk about the effect of the recent drought in Australia. The right answer for this one is D. Describe research on new varieties of canola. So describe research on new varieties of canola. Did you understood um, the answer for this one? It's clear? Let's go to passage two. Passage two talks about our yesterday's Hitting um, example in the slide is about the whale research. If you do remember yesterday's example, today we will just do the global multiple choice of the whole um, passage. The format is as follows: Which of the following is the most suitable title for the reading passage two? Again. It's the same format as we saw previously, but if you see another format, don't freak out, it's the same idea right here. So they're asking for the global multiple choice title of the passage. Let's take a look at our options. Saving Australia's whales. Whale reading secrets. The significance of whale song. Whale behavioral characteristics. Let's 
take a look at A. Saving Australia Wales. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect because this topic was not mentioned in the text. B. Well, reading secrets. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Reading is mentioned, but it's not the main idea of the text. Now let's take a look at D. Well, behavior characteristics is incorrect because yes, they mention behaviors and how they behave, but that was not the main idea of the text. So the answer is C. The significance, which means the significance means it means the meaning of whale song. So is it clear for this one? Let's jump into our new unit and discuss some new tasks in the reading exam. All right, let's start unit five now. In unit five, I will introduce you to locating information which is how you will get the information, the strategies, the format, and all the details. And then we will do the practice um, together. And then we will see the, um, the multiple choice questions. This multiple choice questions will have um, two varieties and different um, formats. We will look at them in the reading. Um, multiple choice questions quite um, different than the listening. Now, let's get started. Locating information. Locating information is one of the hardest questions in the I stream. It requires a lot of comprehension uh, and a lot of understanding. Now, it appears in this task you will have your paragraph. The paragraph will have um, letters. So you will have A, B, C, and so on for each paragraph. In the question set here, you will have a piece of information, and each piece of information will be um, marked as a number, which is your question. Question number one, it has piece of information, a sentence. Two, it has another information, which is in the, sent in the sentence. Three, four, five, and so on. Now, you will need, or you are required, to find which paragraph contain the giving piece of information here. You have to know that you can use as many paragraphs as possible. So that's why it says in here in the instruction, note, you may use any letter more than one. So you might have different information, for example, that is related to a paragraph. And also, you might have no information for the paragraph. So, so there's um, also two possibilities, right? This question is challenging if you don't have the right methods solve the giving questions. 
So right here, we will do, in this lesson, we will boost your confidence in answering the questions and we will, uh, I will introduce you to the right way to do it quickly and efficiently. So, first thing that, the skills that you need for this one is as the other tasks to read all your information that you have a lot of teachers tell their students that you have to start with the passage but it's time consuming and also misleading sometimes so you need to after you did the skimming of the whole passage, you go to your questions and focus on your statement that you need to find. If you do not know what you're looking for, it's like you're wasting your time. If you go to the past and then try to um, put it like, face to face with the, with your options of informations, can be more challenging for you and time you think. So first we go to our statements, statement one, two, three, four, five. We select our keywords and underline all the words that might not be paraphrased, okay? If you feel like this is an important thing. So, for example, the particular species that Professor Marshall is interested in searching or researching. So, my first keyword is the particular species, which is, which means I think about, okay, they're looking for a special um, type of animal, probably, that the name of the professor is important, but it's not a keyword because it's a keyword, but it's not a keyword that's going to be paraphrased. So we said that the keywords that is not going to be paraphrased, we underline it. It's important, but it's not going to be paraphrased. They're not going to say differently about the Professor Marshall. So underline it. It's a keyword. It's important, but a different type of keyword. Interested and researching. So, circle, circle, that's uh, those kind of keywords that can be paraphrased. So, you go the same way with all of your sentences. A reference to the tourist industry, how to submersibles will be transported, exact locating where data will be collected, limitations of previous research, methods. After that, you go to your first paragraph. After you locate the information, you understand exactly what type of information, the keywords that you're looking for, and you have this in front of you all the time. It's like your guide. This is right here. You have to have it in your You focus on this one all the time. You go to your first labeled paragraph carefully. You read your um, topic sentence and also the explanation okay so you try to find any keywords from your words that you have here in the five sentences if you find more than one paragraph containing similar information you have to reread the paragraphs and the question and choose the best one. So here you should focus if there's the same information or similarities between the paragraphs, you should focus on the synonyms of your keywords and the paraphrased information. So if you are scanning for the next 
paragraph, if, for example, you didn't find anything in paragraph A, and then you start scanning in, in B, of course, you have to read the portion of B carefully to decide whether the information that you got matches the um, question statements. If so, it could be one of the possible answers. If not, it's not. Okay? Be very careful while you're answering the questions. Good amount of attention will prevent all these um, challenging situations. Okay? When you are doing the answering process. So focus very well on your statements and try to analyze your paragraph as much as possible. Underline if there's like similar names, places, numbers, like you know in the question statement right here. Underline. Okay. All right. What type of challenges we might face in this question? It's the fact that answers can be anywhere. But more often, the answer will not be the key idea or topic of the paragraph. It could be also even some small details in the paragraph. You may also cross some additional information that might consume your time. Don't be stuck in one place. If you didn't find anything in A and B, go further. So, again, the skills required to answer the locating information, just to recap, skimming, to get the main ideas of the paragraph, locating your keywords, scanning for these keywords, the ability to identify your synonyms and paraphrase words from your sentences. To your programs. All right, now we're ready to practice. The first thing we do, we will do is the skill practice. In this skill practice, you is gonna be a bit harder than the, the usual ones, but this will give you a better understanding of what to select. Now, as we said, the strategy is to, to keep your options in your face like with your all your keywords for each paragraph so you look at each paragraph and each paragraph you try to compare it with the information that is already here so this skill practice will help you a lot to understand the strategy as well as to uh, understand what is the appropriate answer if you are a little bit confused if you feel any confusion between any two options um, note that down. Note everything that you go through. And then, as we said yesterday, with the process of elimination, you go through all the other um, paragraphs, it gets clear for you. Okay? Your decision will be easier. Now, take a look at, we'll do a couple of examples right here, with A and B, for example. 
those options are for every single paragraph and this is what you will find in, in doing the locating information we'll go through all your options with the same paragraph so let's go with your first paragraph and try to locate the sentence that is appropriate and suitable for Simpler, uh, or simpler than on air. It is the, it is right. It is right, or it is the same. But in my in my opinion, uh, the correct one or the more specific one, uh, it is should be implications of discovering life on Mars. Correct. Great job. So the way that you're thinking is absolutely correct, and the way that you analyze the question means that you really understand how arts work. This is a skill practice. So skill practice have more um, challenging stuff. So it will test your understanding here and there. But the way that you think is really, um, um, it showcases that you understand what IELTS is about. So that's a good point for you. I'm proud of that. Now, um, indeed, the right answer is the implications of discovering life on Mars. So that is basically the result or the um, the effects uh, of what will happen if we discover life on a different place. Okay, that's right. I mean, I mean, I mean, excuse me, but I mean that uh, uh, all of the other choices it's already uh, included in in the world uh, of implications. Yes, indeed, correct. So um, there's also in this skill practice. The other options are also close and have somehow relation or correlation to the um, correct answer. So if we want to pick something, we pick something that has um, something mean and also it can have the other subheading as we um, can say about the other um, Informations. Okay, so it's like subheading of the main um, information. Okay, so if if we want to pick some uh, something, as you said, the implication of discovering life on Mars is the correct one because it also comprehend at the same time inside it. There's the evidence. There's the uh, we have um, we can say about scientific description of potential life on Mars as well. And different things so this one is the implication of discovering life on mars we need the also the understanding of the paragraph okay not only the the words itself so it means that you really understand the meaning what they're trying the topic and what they're trying to um give you as a, a writer Okay, and what they're trying to also give you as options in the arts exam. So great job, Masa. Now, in the next one, they're talking about the Martian life. The Martian life is um, a concept that uh, you see in fiction movies like Star Wars and things like that. So, um, in science fiction, they say that, uh, what if we imagine there's life in these planets? What it would be, how it would look like based on our science discoveries and based on our imagination, what it would look like as humans, we like, you know, to think about possibilities and use our imagination. So, based on that, um, here we have, for instance, or for example, in the 20th century, there's between, um, there's a comma, H.G. Wells, which is a name of, I think, the producer, and then the name of the movie, War of the Words, introduced the type of Martian who invades the Earth. So this is the, the first or an example of the science fiction movies about life on Mars. 
So, which one would be more suitable? Um, I think uh, uh, if we see the paragraph, there is uh, for instance. For instance, this means an example. Correct. So that it talk about an example of life on Mars. Correct. It's one, one correct. And also we can see evidence of life on Mars because if I give you an example uh, on life uh, on Mars, uh, so that this is evidence. But, uh, but, but the correct one, an example. The correct one yes. is an example. Correct, you're, you're right. So you're right, the example part is absolutely your hint for your right answer. The, the right answer is an example of life on Mars. But um, I have to explain to you the other uh, option that you thought of, which is the evidence of life on Mars. Um, and evidence needs um, a fact or needs um, something concrete to support it. So if, it, if we're talking about science fiction, it's just an imaginary type of science, it's not real, okay? So, um, an evidence of life on Mars needs more than, than a movie or um, imagination. It needs really something um, bigger, okay? For example, they found water, facts, you know what I mean? So, as you said, the right one, the most suitable one, is an example indeed. The other ones are a bit, um, um, they're not really accurate. They, we cannot really think about it as the right answer. Okay, so now we will, this is just for now, we can do C, D, and E as, um, for example, D has more than one answer for this one. All right, so let's go to the real practice. Here, this one. I'll give you a moment. I'll give you or one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, because it's the a guided practice and this is your first, um, like, you know, we do that together. I have six paragraphs, so we will assume, okay. Here around here we have just skim it with your eyes for two minutes and then we will go to here and try to locate that in each paragraph so we will go uh, first analyze here and then we go to each paragraph and think about if it's relevant to any of the information that they give us first you have to get a full perspective of your um, paragraph. So this is your paragraph, right? uh, the passage story right here. And read each one of these paragraphs first. A few years later, he had settled permanently in Kerry Kerry in Northernland, New Zealand, and was married to a Maori woman known as Teruhi. She is a sister of, a, of the local and powerful chief of the Maori tribe in Gapui. This was his second marriage, his first having been relatively short-lived. The practice of marrying high-ranking Maori women was fairly common amongst early European arrivals at that time. As alliances and protection could be obtained by marriage into powerful Maori families. In addition, European women were scholars. Okay, so we got two of our um, statements. We got the courage at the beginning and then we got how the settlers did alliances to obtain um, uh, security in that uh, era. So what they did, they married high-ranked women from a very um, known um, tribes, mayor tribes, and this way they had uh, alliances plus protection. 
okay from um, these um, tribes. So, so settlers often set up security by marrying high ranked um, women, like the the, the sister uh, of the chief that we um, read about. All right. So C includes two statements. We go through D. By the end of the 1830s, Capsules and his wife had settled in a trading town called Makitu. Items of trade include foodstuff such as potato, pigs and timber. The latter being in plentiful supply from the dense surrounding forests. However, business transactions were mainly focused around flax. A light colored textile fiber der derived from an erect annual plant of the same name, which can be used to make fabric. So they're talking about the primary goods that basically we use it for something else. And this is included where um, here because, the, yeah, of a primary and the this kind of trading uh, community. Correct. Primary, because it's really um, the first thing that we use to make other goods. And versatile, we make other goods with it. We can make fabric, dye, paper, medicine, and so on. Yep. So, and then they said mainly for muskets. So they're also, um, they traded uh, muskets, which is the gunpowder. Um, after the death of his second wife, Tapsul married for a third time, this time to a high-ranking woman from the town of Rotorua. Um, the marriage resulted in um, six children. It doesn't have anything to do with our points. We go further. have two um, uh, paragraphs left and we're done, so about two minutes. Tapsul's business ventures prospered as he extended trading posts along the bay of Flinty Coast, the main coast, and inland through Rotoroa and Matamata, which were both major flat producing regions. Generally, traders during this period enjoyed wealthy lifestyles, and in particular, uh, those such as Tapsul with the strong links with the Mayor community could source a seemingly endless supply of sought after communities such as seals, whales, timber and flax. At the time, business opportunities were immense and organizations were able, able to operate without being required to comply with contemporary constraints such as the Confirma regulations and taxation. The local missionaries, so the local missionaries are one of the words that represents um, religious leaders. So local missionaries who were in New Zealand with the purpose of promoting Christian belief had mixed feelings towards Tapso. They disapproved of his trading of muskets to local Maori. They were not happy the fact that he is trading um, gunpowder to the locals. And yet, his peacemaking efforts between conflicting Maori tribes, the Arawa and Tigai, Tirangi, were respected. Okay, so there is an opposition here. So the missionaries did not like that he is um, basically trading some gunpowders to the locals and they also um, they did not um, somehow, they said yes, the, 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 he tried to solve some conflict between the tribes, so it was respected, but they disapproved the fact that he can sell um, gunpowder to locals. So here we said that um, E is justification of opposition from um, religious leaders. So why the, the religious leaders were against um, 
cattle. So they disapprove. Basically. Lastly, we have F in the 1836, a famous mayor chief from Matamata Elliot himself, who had engaged Rangi and launched a devastating 